When a man of normal habits is ill, everyone hastens to assure him that he is going to recover. When a vegetarian is ill, which fortunately very seldom happens, everyone assures him that he is going to die and that they told him so and that it serves him right. They implore him to take at least a little gravy so as to give himself a chance of lasting out the night. George Bernard Shaw Hi, my name is Camille DeAngelis and I am the author of Moon Ireland. I am also an ethical vegan and so when I went back to research the third edition earlier this year, I got to try a bunch of amazing new vegan restaurants in Dublin and elsewhere. So in this video I'm going to be sharing some of my recommendations from Dublin and in future videos I'll be doing Cork and the rest of the country. When you arrive at Dublin Airport, you can go for a falafel sandwich at Cafe Nero or O'Brien Sandwich Bar has a vegan breakfast bagel with hummus and roasted veggies. Everywhere you look, you'll see vegan food advertised, even in places you don't usually expect to find it. The other side of the plant-based trend is that some places are advertising healthy options, but they haven't actually taken out the meat or eggs or dairy. It's just a better ratio of vegetables and whole grains to animal foods. But for the most part, it seems like we're moving in the right direction. My first vegan food wreck is Beast Eatery on Victoria Quay, with lunch under 12 euros or so. With one exception, which I'll note, all the places I recommend serve meals in this price range. I told my boyfriend he could come along for the first week of my three and a half week trip, as long as he understood that I was working. Though fortunately, eating great vegan food in Irish restaurants totally counts as working. <laughs> We only ended up having time to visit one Dublin restaurant together, and I'm glad it was Beast, because Steve is a total junk food vegan. If you like seitan chicken and beef dishes, especially if you used to love Kentucky Fried Chicken, this is the spot for you, because they do a vegan fried chicken that is quite delicious. The portions are huge. He literally could not fit his mouth around the burger he ordered. And the service is really good, too. The owner waited on us herself, and she was great. If you're hanging around Temple Bar, my favorite spot is a cafe simply called V. Unfortunately, they aren't completely vegan because they offer dairy milk for coffee, but the deluxe vegan grilled cheeses here are really nice. Best of all, they are very dog friendly. They have a row of doggy beds along one wall, so if you're really missing your pooch while you're on vacation and you come here for lunch, you may be able to pet somebody else's dog. I hear The Happy Pair has recently opened a second restaurant in Clondalkin, and while I've only visited their original location in Greystone so far, I can tell you their food really hits that sweet spot between hearty and healthy. I just wish they were totally vegan, and that other veg restaurants could get as much glowing good press as these guys do. Anyhow, rather than go to the Dublin location, which is not terribly convenient, I recommend taking the train to Bray in County Wicklow, walking the cliff path to Greystones, and rewarding yourself with lunch at the Happy Pear's original location. A few quick mentions of vegetarian eateries I've enjoyed on past trips to Dublin. Cornucopia, a Dublin institution, they have both counter and sit-down service. Happy Food is located in a yoga studio and they have really excellent breakfast with lentil sausages and chickpea hash. And Govinda's is another Dublin mainstay with locations on Abbey Street north of the Liffey and Angier Street on the south side. I recommend arriving just before closing because they just want to get rid of as much extra food as possible. So they'll sell you a full portion for only a euro or at least they were still doing this as of 2016. Thank you to my friend Dermid for this shoestring tip. Now on to the Carrot's Tail in Rathmines. I adore this place. I adore everything about this place. The food is great, all the staff are so friendly and kind, and they are 100% for the animals. I ordered a cappuccino, a chicken seitan Caesar salad, and a cute little raw cake from Bliss Bites for dessert, and everything was terrific. It's not centrally located, but it's totally worth hopping on the bus or walking 25 minutes or so to get there from the St. Stephen's Green area. The Eat Yard, also in Rathmines. This is a delightful outdoor food court. Granted, vegans can't eat at a lot of the stalls, but it doesn't matter because they have Vishop. This is a mostly takeaway restaurant on the north side doing cassava based seafood cutlets garnished with fancy seaweed, and they have a food truck here at the Eat Yard. I'd gotten the Vish at their brick and mortar and the cauliflower rings at the Eat Yard. And man, those were not only the best cauliflower rings I have ever had, I truly cannot imagine ever tasting anything more delicious. You will swoon, I promise you.
Here's the map again with the Vish Shop location included. We're going to stay north side for these last few dining options. Now, I'm sure most people think that vegans say glowing things about a vegan restaurant just because it's vegan, but I will always be candid if I feel there is room for improvement. I wanted to love Bio Wine Bar. Bio means live, which is a very fitting name for a place serving raw and fermented foods. And I did love the service. I found that restaurant management can sometimes be a bit unwelcoming to solo diners, but the staff at Bio were impeccably attentive and kind. The white wine I ordered was lovely, absolutely lovely, but the food just isn't where anywhere near as exquisite as they like to think it is, unfortunately. The pâtés are not flavorful enough, and if you want your patrons to think you're at all innovative, you cannot serve pasta. I don't care if it's freshly made and what else is on it, vegans so often have to settle for pasta at traditional restaurants that you cannot serve pasta as your only main course at a vegan restaurant. That said, dessert did somewhat redeem the meal. The aquafaba meringue and black tahini sauce combination was as intriguing as the rest of the food could have been. Another thing I didn't love was the awkward shape of the space. It's very narrow and they've got huge pillows on the narrow benches, so you kind of feel wedged between the wall and the diners across the narrow aisle from you. So all in all, if you're in the area, I definitely recommend stopping by for a glass of wine before dinner, but I wouldn't go for the tasting menu, which is extremely pricey for what you ultimately get. Take a Veg is another fully vegan cafe that is hardcore for the animals, tucked away in the basement level of the Moore Street shopping mall. The quote unquote fish in the burger I got was tempeh wrapped in nori seaweed, which is very different from the Vish shop version. And I don't have a preference, I really liked them both. My last night in Dublin, I met up with some old friends for dinner at this very fun, kitschy arcade bar and restaurant. And while the menu isn't all vegetarian or vegan, pretty much every meat option has a vegan counterpart. And our seitan nuggets and fully loaded chili cheese dogs were very tasty. And we enjoyed the retro pinball machines downstairs best of all. My last recommendation is the Virgin Mary, Dublin's first non-alcoholic pub, which offers a delicious all-vegan mocktail menu. This is the Tiki Street with non-alcoholic Syrah, hibiscus, pomegranate molasses, vanilla, lime, and black cardamom. They also have nitro coffee on top, so when they pour it out, it looks just like a pint of Guinness. That's it for this round, but stay tuned for Vegan Cork. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Thanks so much.